Thank you very much, sir, for your excellent talk. Uh, in fact, uh, we uh, fully appreciate your frustration and uh, at a point in that slide uh, in which the chief was requesting, uh, let me assure you, for 1965, some of us also would have gone to request it. Moving further into the understanding uh, of the operations, I will now request the General Atahasnan again to speak about the operations in Jammu and Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's a lot of attrition in the audience, but it doesn't matter. Uh, one thing is very clear, of course, that you just heard for half an hour what should have happened. I'm going to give you 10 minutes what actually happened. Right? I have just 10 minutes for that. I plan to do related only to Jammu Kashmir, primarily to Jammu Kashmir, because subsequently there are veterans, senior veterans, senior veterans who will tell you about what happened in Punjab and the plains of Jammu Kashmir. Okay. Uh, those of you who don't know what the valley is, what Kashmir is, may have not visited or may have visited many years ago. Just an idea this is a very famous photograph and painting of Sarabjit Singh the very famous photographer and painter from Chandigarh. This is what the Kashmir Valley is, right? How what is the meaning of a valley? This is the Shamshabani range. What you're finding in this purple is the line of control, right? This is the Shamshabani range in the north. This is the Pir Panjal. Pir Panjal divides Jammu region, Punch, from the valley. Here's Kishtuar. This is where the Amnath Craig Cave is, the famous Amnath Shrine is. This is the Great Himalayan range here. This is how it is formed up. Where is the Hajipir Banj? This is the, this is Uri, this is Punch. In between Uri and Punch is the Hajipir Banj. This is called the Uri Banj. Very important area, this is the Neelam Valley. Also known as Kishanganga. This is the Neelam Valley and this is the area of the Uppara Sekta. Where we are very dominant in that area. Why I am explaining this to you in very brief is because subsequently you rely on Operation Gibraltar what really happened. Okay. Now, Gibraltar was all, as I explained to you earlier, was all about launching multiple forces into Kashmir and into the Jammu region of Poonch, Rajauri and Nashera and having a force ready in the plains, in the Chinab corridor, the Ravich, the, the Chinab Jhilam corridor, to exploit this ultimately. This is what it was. Now, the same thing which I showed you, this is Kashmir Valley. This is the Whale of Kashmir. Right? And here is the Ajipi bulge, this is the Uri bulge. What you see here is all the Gibraltar forces. You know, all the Gibraltar forces which were launched here. And this is the area of Grand Slam, the Chinab area or the, the Chinab Jhelum corridor. Everything, as far as the army is concerned, is based upon corridors. If you see from north to south, the rivers of Punjab, you will find that it's the Chinab Jhelum corridor, which is very important, which makes an access to Ahnur. Then after that, it is the Ragi Chinab corridor in which the subsequent battles of one corps were fought. Subsequently, it is the Ragi Sattach corridor or the Ragi Piyas corridor partially, but also the Ragi Sattach corridor in which most of the battles of 11 corps were fought. Okay. What are the type of forces? These Gibraltar forces, when given these fascinating names, Salahuddin force, Hosnavi force, Tariq force, they were approximately a battalion worth. Irregulars, but Pakistan occupied Kashmir locals were led by regulars of the Pakistan army. They were the ones who were providing them leadership. Very different situation from what happened in 1989-90. In 1965, they went and infiltrated. Now the greatest thing at this time was that there was a single division only, 19 infantry division spread out over the line of control. You can do two things. In the sense, a division which is sprung out on the line of control can either look after the line of control, the sanctity of the line of control, or it can do counter infiltration. It can't do both things. To expect a division to stop the infiltration and say that the Pakistan army can also stop the Pakistan army coming and nibbling into our defenses is not possible. So immediately we had to respond by sending in an additional brigade, 163 brigade was immediately sent inside here, but that was also not sufficient. 5th of August this operation was launched. And for the better part of the next 21 days, as it was discovered, we engaged them at different heights in different parts of Kashmir. Their whole intent was to reach Srinagar, uh, cut off the national highway, get out of the Srinagar airfield, get out of the ordinary radio station, radio station, declare the revolutionary council has taken over, 
all this was the intent. But this was all subject to the support coming from the people of Jammu Kashmir. Now it is strange that a man like Ayub Khan and his advisors, uh, particularly Uttar Hussain Malik, who was the commander of 12th, did not consider this aspect that they did prepare the ground situation at all. 1989 was something completely different. 1987 to 1989, after the terrible elections, that the, 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 what happened with the elections in 1987, the groundswell was all against us, against India, the rest of India, up to 1989 when the initiation started, the conflict initiation started. Here, there was nothing like of that, that type at all. There were no sentiments against India, except the fact that the Hazrat issue had taken place. The loss of the Prophet's heir had taken place. Sheikh Abdullah had been imprisoned. These issues had were there in the in, in, in the in the environment, but it had not created that kind of anti-national feeling that what had been created in between 1987 and 1989. Okay. But all these are very familiar names to you. You hear all these names today also. You can see the Dwar, Tandhar area. This is very, very successful. The infiltration was very successful in this area. Gurez, Kale, Minimar area, the area in the in Kerala, now Kerala sector. Roshera, Sundar Bani, Dras, Karil, all these are very familiar areas. Okay, now what did this lead to? I must take you back. Yeah. Yeah. What I want to tell you is, it was, it was decided, it was the revised by General Harbaksh. Even well before when the, before the broadcast was launched, that if a, a operation of this nature is launched into, into Kashmir, then obviously one of the areas which is going to be very crucial, through which most of the logistics, the launch pads, everything will exist, is the area of the Hajipri Panch. It's a large area between Kuri and Punch. And the decision was finally taken to go for the Hajipri Panch. This was a major decision. Even more important than the decision to cross the boundary into Punjab, because this was the first decision to actually cross the ceasefire line. Now, this issue here of the Air Force is a very important issue. There is no doubt that the presence of the helicopters made a great difference. I wish there had been many more helicopters because, in counterinsurgency operations, in the you have helicopters with you, it is a marvelous force for the plan, no doubt. But as far as the usage of fixed wing aircraft is concerned, I would have loved it. I would have loved it if aircraft were used in the Hajipi Bank. If they had a softened up, of course, the price would have been lost. But uh, subsequently, also in the Hajipi Bank, if we had used aircraft, fixed wing aircraft, more offensively, perhaps it may have helped us tremendously. But remember one thing about the Air Force, which I would like to also, not in a debate form, but suggesting. The use of, the, of an Air Force is a far more strategic decision. Because the crossing of the line of control of the international border by a fixed wing aircraft going and delivering its munitions means what? A tank going across and coming back, delivering a two, two shells or rounds is still not war. You going and conducting a raid across the line of control is not war. It can be denied. There's a deniability in it. But an air force, the moment an air force is launched, there is no looking back. War is there. So the decision was taken to launch the operations into, into Hajipi. Now this is what the Hajipi battle was all about. This is Uri and this is Punch, the easiest way to describe it schematically. Right? Here is Hajipi. The pass is here. It's about 8,500 feet. I did the commander of that brigade, so I know that area extremely well. This is the Hajipi pass on both sides. What is the meaning of pass? There are two heights. The height on the left is the Bisoli. Highest feature is Bisoli, or Bisali actually it is called. And on the right is this area called Bidori, not correctly shown here. Bidori and Bisali. Closer down below is a place called the Ring Contour and another tabletop out here. It was a brigade operation, the 68 brigade, Operation Bakshi, brigade led by the famous Brigade Bakshi, Zulu Bakshi, came manager Zulu Bakshi Mahavi Chakra. Uh, led by one power and 19 Punjab. One para gave it to them a tremendous operation on the 26th of August, which was launched. On to Sarsang Ridge Line, which is known now known as the Mike Ridge, Sarsang Ridge Line, capturing Sunk in the same night, 
exploiting further and getting to a place called Lane Valley Gary. This is not marked here. Lane Valley Gary, I think marked here. Lane Valley Gary. Capturing Lane Valley Gary in the immediate exploitation. And then with the company group, Major later on left General Rangit Dayal, asking for permission that I can descend into the valley and climb again and let me go and exploit it. Well, I think I can make it there. So even while these operations in Vidori were still stalling, you found that the Deep Dayal led the operations, came down into the valley, into the, into the Hyderabad Nala, climbed up again and managed to get to the Zahidkarpur area here. And that is how on night 27, 28, August, early morning, Haji Peace fell. This was a hugely strategic thing. Because the collapse of Haji Peace, of course, the mopping up of Haji Peace bulged to the better part of the next 10 days. Because there was a sudden thrust which was coming from 93 Brigade also from here. And that is what led to the final mopping up. But this was a huge strategic success. And this gave a tremendous boost to the self confidence of Western Command, 15 Corps, and the overall Indian Army. And with kind of decorations which were won, etc. It was a tremendous boost to everyone. And this is what led to the scare that it is a possibility that the Indian Army, having captured Haji P, having done kind of successful operations in Kupwana, in the, against uh, uh, in, in the Nilam Valley area, both are like from both directions, they are likely to concentrate and go for an offensive to Muzaffarabad. This is a perception which seemed to prevail in the Pakistan Army. And therefore, there was a tearing hurry to launch Operation Grandstand. And this is how Grand, this, is, this is the Haji bin battle. You can see Punch and Puri, and you can see what is the crucial strategic nature of this. Last bit, the Chum Jogia battle. Not a very good sketch, I just want to tell you what. In a minute, maybe. The importance here. I want to outline that Akhrur is here, and the road from Akhrur going up towards Punj. This is the road. The whole intention was north of Chinab, launch this offensive, you get hold of this bridge, this is a famous island bridge, you get hold of that bridge, and therefore all forces, that is, we're hold of 25 there, 80 brigade onwards, which is 29 brigade, 80 brigade, all northwards would get cut off. It was launched because it was a very, no doubt a very sensible thing to have done from the Pakistani angle. Akhtar Malik designed it himself. And it was launched with two brigades and two regiments. This is the Munawar uh, alignment. There were covering troops ahead of it. Total of five battalions were available to 191 brigade at that time. But actually in the, in the main area of, of, of leading up to Ahrur, there were two battalions. 15 command, 6 Sekh line, which were available there. The important thing here, on the 1st of September when this operation was launched, the Pakistanis took too long with their two regiments to try and mop up all the covering troops who were ahead of the river. If they had not spent time doing all this and had made a dash immediately to try and get to the Fatawal Ranch or to Akhrur, it would have probably they would have been able to get to Akhrur. Because there were not allowed troops in the depth at all. But what happened was that was the time when the Air Force, if it had been brought in, this was the time on this on this line of the Munawar that actually if the Air Force had come in by day, the entire Pakistani armor would have been sitting out. It didn't happen at that time. But may, they made a fatal error, the Pakistanis. The same day the Pakistani army chief flew in here and changed the command of the operation. Then he removed Akhtar Hussain Malik from the command. The reason which many people say is that Akhtar Hussain Malik was actually an Ahmadiyya. He was not even a Sunni, not even a Shia, he was an Ahmadiyya. And they did not want to give any benefit of a victory to an Ahmadiyya. And therefore he was removed from command, although he had left the entire Gibraltar. He was removed from command and Gahiya Khan, who was Josie Seventh day waiting in the, in, the, in the shades there, and who was a favorite of Ayub, was made the Josie. Now what happens in a battle, those for our non-informed friends to understand, what happens in a battle? If you're certainly one door told, in the next one minute you're told, you are the Josie now. What will you do? You don't know what is happening around you. So you say, give me 24 hours. Johnny said, don't worry, I will then get hold of everything. This is exactly what happened. 24 hours he took and in those 24 hours, the Indian Army brought one nine and pulled back 191 Brigade and made a new position here. Brought in 41 Brigade, brought in 29, uh, 20 Lancers, lesser squadron, whole regiment was built up here. In 24 hours, the battle of Ru changed. And that is how India was saved. Actually, and because of the impending nature of the possibility of success here, a counter offensive had to be launched to Punjab. Thank you.
Thank you very much. I I can't go to lessons.